What trends have you been seeing from hosting CTA Expo? What's happening is now an institution is creating a basket in their portfolio of 20 traders that is equivalent to one big trader and splintering that basket down to smaller pieces, to smaller traders. Um, then there's all sorts of variations on this. Uh, there are people who want capacity lockups. There are people who want traders to take the first loss. It's all over the board. Uh, but there seems to be a fair consensus that uh, the portfolio of emerging traders uh, adds better alpha than just hiring established traders. There are a whole bunch of ETFs now that are essentially CTAs that are being sold as stocks. Uh, there are a number of major firms that have basically created their own systems to go out and offer them at one, one and a half percent fees without incentive fees as an ETF. Um, I think over time what we'll see is these products get better and better as they weed themselves out. Um, they have distinct advantages from a, a institutional point of view in that look like a stock, fit in my stock accounting. Um, there's been enormous growth in the last five or 10 years in uh, CTA mutual funds. Uh, and part of that is, is that, you know, the money raisers and the clients out there needed something to do with money. What are the pros and cons of managed futures mutual funds? The true pro is it gives the client a, a low-cost way to participate in an alternative investment that will diversify his portfolio um, that has probably better liquidity. Um, the negatives right now are probably all on the cost and structural side in that uh, the cost of doing these is a little bit prohibitive, but it's coming down. Um, and when it comes down to a reasonable rate, I think this makes a lot of sense. The scary thing right now is the rate of change in the business, the rate of change in trading strategies, the rate of change in product structures. Every six or nine months, something new is coming up. People are trying all sorts of different things. What are CTAs doing to stay ahead of the curve? I think the most interesting thing to happen and the most productive so far that's raised the most money is the ETF which started basically as an index product. We're going to be long crude or long gold or long gold and silver. Uh, that we now have uh, a growth in active trading vehicles. Now they may be registered with the SEC, but they're doing trend following strategies. They look like, feel like, it taste like a CTA. And I think they're part of the managed futures community. Um, and I think this has enormous potential. Uh, I think it actually uh, may eclipse the mutual fund uh, in that it's cheaper to do. And the single strategy in the ETF actually is an easier sale than saying, I'm going to pick a portfolio of traders and do good by you. That was always a hard sale. <laughs> because there you're not selling a, an approach or a strategy, you're selling your a person or a firm. How does the emerging manager space look today? The problem with the emerging manager space from a client point of view is that there are so many of them. Uh, and they come in every way, shape, and form, and there you know, must be 50 or 100 different ways they're now trading using different information in different markets. What most emerging traders don't understand is the typical client only needs to hire four or five traders a year. And he faces a formidable task of narrowing down 500 to four or five. Uh, and he can be awfully arbitrary. I know major clients that their answer to that question was, we talked to somebody on day one and we wait a year to see if he's still around. And if half of them disappear, well, that's okay. Uh, and I think this is going to get worse with the proliferation of emerging managers. Uh, so I think we've built a, a bigger time constraint into the investment process with the proliferation of emerging managers with the bigger numbers. Uh, that be said, 
Uh, there will always be uh, clients out there for managers who take small accounts.